back out in the garage today to start on another small project. I've got a Willian Max Universal swing arm bag, and I had to figure out how I was going to mount it to my Scout, and also I had to figure out the best way to keep it from touching the belt. One of the things I did was I made up a special bracket uh, just out of some bar stock aluminum and uh, use it to space the bottom of where the bag's going to mount so it doesn't hit the belt drive. And the second thing I am going to do, and which is a side benefit, is the, the Scout 60 has a plastic belt guard. Uh, it's not the greatest looking thing, but I understand they were saving money. But you can get the new Scout Bobber uh, belt guard, the upper belt guard, as an accessory item. And it's steel. It's kind of uh, wrinkle powder coated to match the rest of the engine. And also it's got like uh, slits cut in it, you know, kind of like make it look lightened and, you know, kind of a racing, you know, theme to it. But uh, I'm actually going to use it because it gives me another place to mount my swing arm bag. My cool um, swing arm bag here. And it's got some holes in it already. It's kind of a universal. But the other thing I got here, let me get all this stuff out. So I've got some grommets, some destructions from Indian. So this is the Scout Bobber uh, upper belt guard and it is totally made out of metal. Uh, it's even got this this flange here which kind of makes it a little bit more rigid and also the main reason why I bought it other than the fact it looks cool is this. This is going to give me an area to put the the upper strap mount for the, uh, the uh, swing arm bag into some place that's a little bit more solid to mount collection of all the tools I'm going to need to do this. I've got some hardware I bought. I made this up. Uh, this is just a piece of, you know, bar stock aluminum and I drilled all these holes and chamfered them. Uh, this is the hole that the tie wrap is going to go to help hold the front uh, uh, lower corner of the uh, swing arm bag. But I'm going to mount this to the lower mounting holes on the lower belt guard and with this extending outward I don't ever have to worry about whether or not that leather bag is going to touch that belt and possibly get sucked into it. So um, I want to use the front of this, it's the upper belt guard, to help hold up the top of my uh, swing arm bag. But the problem is, on the Scout 60, this is plastic. This on the other hand, this is steel. And also it matches the, uh, the finish of the swing arm a lot better. So this front bolt is easy to get at. Um, however, there are two Allen screws behind this part. They come in from the back side. And wouldn't you know it, the, uh, the pulley is in the way. So I'm going to try to get at those without having to completely take the rear wheel off. I think if I just loosen the wheel and let it go all the way forward, um, you know, be able to slide it forward and back. I might take just the belt off the pulley altogether. Uh, that'll give me enough clearance to get back there to those two Allen screws and then get this guy off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the wheel. That means uh, because I've loosened, you know, the rear wheel, I have to readjust not only the belt tension, but the how the belt tracks on the rear wheel and then center the wheel and the swing arm. I mean, it's not really much different than doing it with a chain drive. Uh, but I have to do it in order to get this off. It seems seems kind of silly that Indian designed it this way, but that's the way it is. There's you there's no way to get an Allen wrench onto the back side of this guy uh, to take it off without without moving the wheel first. So first thing you gotta do is you gotta remove the sir clip. And that uh, safety feature in case this nut ever walks itself out, it can't get past that sir clip, so you know the axle won't come out. All right, the next thing I got to do is loosen that guy. That dude is a 27 millimeter bolt. And I got a special socket just for this, but I will only torque this down like this. Uh, I'm not going to remove it like this and I'll show you why. My exhaust pipe is so close on that side that uh, I don't want to run the risk of damaging it. So I've got a 27 mil box wrench here and I'm going to use the ratchet on the opposite side to help back this off. This nut is torqued down to 60, 65 foot-pounds, so it's not a terrible lot, but uh, it's a good amount. you got to watch what you're doing there. Now that i got it cracked, let's come back at it with this guy. 
Now remember, I'm not taking the wheel off. I didn't want it loose. This is the adjuster that adjusts the axle in and out. It's also what you use to set the belt tension. Um, so what I'm going to do is loosen this guy off. So there we go. Push that forward. And can I reach that? Don't think I can. So I'm going to back this completely off and then give myself tons of room here. You want to know that's a, a 13 mil for this bolt back here. I've got the axle uh, backed off quite a bit and I've got the wheel pushed forward as far as it'll go. So now I should be able to just weasel this belt off. The reason why I wanted to get the belt loose and off the pulley is so I can also pull the wheel all the way back to get access to this front Allen bolt because they don't make it easy. Alright so push the wheel all the way back now that the belt's off of there and I can get in there with my 4 mil Allen driver. Note to Indian, redesign this. This sucks. <laughs> so there's the one Allen, Allen bolt and then push the wheel all the way back forward again. Shove. I should be able to get in here on the other side. And I can. Boy, there's just enough room to get at it, let me tell you. Uh, one thing to note, I'm noting this to myself, Loctite. Blue Loctite on that. So I have to put Loctite back on it when it goes back together. So that's the, the back end. And the front is just a simple 10 mil. Crack him off. So I should be able to weasel this guy out now. And there we go. Mission accomplished here. But look at this. I mean, see how much flex there is in that? Good enough to use as a belt guard, obviously, and it also saves money on the 60s, but uh, I can't use that to mount my uh, my swing arm bag. So let's put this back together. It's pretty pretty simple assembly. <laughs> it goes in the opposite way the old one came out, but this one does have little rubber grommets, uh, and they get just simply pushed into these holes like so. Let me see if I can get this guy fished in here without scratching everything to hell, because that would suck. The plastic one came out with little to no touching of stuff. So, I'm really careful here. I believe I should be able to coax this guy into position. There we go. Not hateful at all. I'll start this first bolt up here. I know these have got to be Loctited. Uh, I'm just starting it so it can hold itself in place. Already looks cooler. Just regular old blue Loctite. And I know that normally you'd want to get rid of all the original thread locker on there. Uh, but there wasn't a hell of a lot. And I don't have a lot of space here to get my fingers in. So. We're going to work with what we got. So I'll start that guy in by hand. Then I'm going to take this front one back out because it was just kind of helping to hold things up. And then Loctite this one up. That makes sense. I mean, you don't want anything around where the dry belt's cruising to, uh, to come loose from vibration. And now I've got to once again pull the wheel all the way back. So I can get that front one in. It's quite an ordeal for <laughs> for just a couple of bolts, man. And there is no torque spec for these. Um, not that you're going to be able to get a torque wrench on them where they're hiding that. 
I would just say uh, don't over tighten them and break some stuff or strip them out. It's pretty obvious. So, let's get the ratchet on this guy. Tighten him down. Now, <laughs> I gotta shove the wheel to the front again, which is fine because I need to do that so that I can get the belt back on it. So, it helps to be able to pull the square washer out some. Alright, so now. I can just, just like a bicycle chain, get that dude on there. Now the front bolt is tightened all the way down. Now I can move this wheel until he's in just the right spot. So I can tighten the back bolt. And you can just get at it too if you're patient. Uh, if you're not patient, just go ahead and take the wheel off. You're like 90% of the way there anyhow. Tightening up this front mounting bolt here, and it's shouldered just like the rear Allen ones are. So, you're basically tightening it until you compress the, the grommet, and then the shoulder of the bolt bottoms out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of tension on the old belt on this side, and then uh, just to, just to start, give it a starting point, and when I'm finished, I'll set the, uh, the overall tension. So, what I've got here is all the hardware I need to mount this bracket that I've made to the bike. They're 6 mil bolts. They're all stainless. Uh, the thread pitch is 1.0. So this goes together like that. The front mounting hole needs a spacer. And then all of these washers here are also required um, based upon the way I figured out how to make it mount. My nifty homemade bracket goes into these bolt holes. Uh, these are 6 mil by 1.0 thread. And um, the reason why I've got one bolt longer than the other one will be really you know, apparent here in a second. These guys are out. So, if I remove the lower belt guard here, and you can see, see the stagger on it? The swing arm's got a taper to it, um, and so I have to compensate for that. Hence the bracket I made, and I've got that that spacer tube there and then that squares my bracket up to the drive belt so that the bag is always the, the correct distance away from it. Um, also want to point out that all the hardware stainless and uh, also the, the original Allen bolts are shouldered and they do that so that when it goes through the plastic and it bottoms out you can't you can't over tighten the, the part and crack the plastic. So because there's a recess there, I'm just putting some, some M6 uh, stainless washers in there and then I'm going to sandwich the washers and as long as it's not over torqued, which it doesn't need to be, uh, I won't crack the plastic. These uh, split washers here on my bracket, I don't really need to put any thread locker on there. And first thing I got to do is capture my washer's on the back side, because remember, I don't have a shouldered bolt, so I want to squish this plastic together so that it doesn't... There we go. Then, this is actually going to go there, but because it's too hard to hold that all at once, I'm actually just going to mount it on the screws before I put it up, offer it up to the bike. There's that one, there's that one. Now, let's see if I can do this without dropping washers and 
bolts every which way. Yeah. Now I'm mindful of how those washers are seating into that plastic. There's actually a small groove that they'll locate into. And uh, I didn't record a video of making up this bracket here. I figured that would probably be boring as can be. And these bolts are actually just long enough to do the job. Once they compress that... Uh... And I could have used a, a domed Allen bolt, but the local hardware store didn't have the, the M6 by 1.0s um, in anything but these, for, in stainless anything about these just standard bolts. Like I said, because I'm using a split washer, I don't have to worry about Loctite. Job done. That's not going to go anywhere. And when that swing arm bag is mounted here, uh, one of the holes in it is going to mount to this opening on my bracket. The other one's going to go all the way around the swing arm back here. And the last one's going to go through uh, the hole up here. And that's... I mean, that's a solid mount. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. It'll never go into the moving wheel or the, uh, the belt. So now all i got to do is adjust and tighten my wheel, get it off the lift, and I can put the bag on. All right, so I'm going to explain this real quick. I have this belt tensioner. Um, it's a 10-pound belt tensioner, and what you do is... Um, you see where it says 10 pounds there? This is made by Motion Pro, by the way, and it wasn't very expensive. It was like 15 bucks. And so this upper part you push up onto the belt and uh, there's a calibrated spring in here. And when that, when that O-ring hits the 10 pound mark, that means you're pushing up with 10 pounds of force. According to the Indian manual, at 10 pounds of force pushed up on it, you should have 12 millimeters of deflection, right? There's my scale and there's this. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and push up on this. You can see how loose it is right now. And that's approximately the halfway distance, which is what it says. Uh, but basically just in front of the guard there, the lower belt guard, I'm going to push up on this dude until that O-ring hits the 10-pound mark, and I have 12 millimeters of deflection according to my scale. Then I know that this nut has been pushed back far enough by this carrier here and then the belt tension is set. Then I have to take and square the wheel up to the rest of the bike. And you can do it by measuring the center of the axle to the center of the swing arm nut. You also want to check three rotations forward and three rotations backward to make sure that the belt stays centered on the rear pulley. <clears throat> All right, so I take my, my metal scale here and I'm going to put it at the upper edge of the tool and it's just resting on the belt. Now remember that nut at the back of the axle carrier is what you're adjusting. This O-ring is going to push down to the 10 foot-pound mark, and as this guy's pushing up, I want the bottom edge to be at 12 millimeters per the manual. So if I give that a good shove, right when that bottoms out at 10 foot-pounds, the edge of that is at 12, and it's a little hard to hold. It's easier when I'm not filming it. That's it. So that belt right now is adjusted to the right tension. It deflects 12 millimeters at 10 foot-pounds per the manual. This bolt here with a nut on the end of it uh, pulls the axle carrier in and out. And I mean you could rely on these index marks now that we got the belt drive side set for the tension. And we did that by simply you know tightening and loosening this nut until it was just right. Um, what I like to do is I'll measure the um, how many threads I got out here as a starting point. Just use your scale and measure, you know, how many threads out from the end of the bolt you got. That's one way to do it. There's indexes on here, uh, and then make the other side match. Also, you can measure from the center of the axle to the center of the swing arm pivot. So what you want is you want the belt centered in the pulley as best you can. But you also want the wheel square to the bike, so you may have to make a compromise between the two. I need to adjust this guy so that the belt stays centered in the pulley. But then I also need to measure to make sure that it's all centered up. You kind of have to bounce back and forth between the drive pulley and the uh, 
the non-drive side on the axle carrier to get the axle square to the bike but you also want the pulley as centered as you possibly can in the rear wheel. So uh, let me go about adjusting that. You gotta put a little bit of tension on this nut because it draws the spacers closer together and it tends to make the wheel move slightly before you start adjusting this side to come over here <laughs> and check to see if your uh, belt centered. And you know what, no matter how hard I tried, I never got it 100% centered. It's just a little bit off-centered, but the main thing is my measurement from the center of the axle to the front of the bike and the center of the axle to the very end of the swing arm on both sides is identical uh, within like a millimeter measured with my dial caliper. So that was, that was a little bit more hassle than uh, what I wanted it to be. Now I gotta do is torque the axle nut down and I can lower the bike off the, the stand. So I'm gonna use my uh, box wrench, 27 mil, on the non-nut side of the axle here. The nut side, I'm going to use my torque wrench. And this guy goes up to 65 foot-pounds. I gotta be careful here to not slip and bang up my exhaust. One, two, that's it. Carefully get my socket off of there. So that's now torqued up. Then, just with my finger pressure here, should be able to get this E-clip back in here. Move it around, make sure it's seated. That's it. She's all back together. Really didn't take long at all to mount the bag. I ended up using a pair of tie wraps on each one of the three mounting points. Like I said before, that spot on the upper belt guard uh, got tie wrapped there. No matter how, how much I push this in, it's never, ever, ever gonna touch that belt. And you can see it's tie wrapped on there. There's the bracket. Then at the back here, got two more tie wraps. So what you do is this really nice bag. It's got a it's got a quick release on here. And it comes in two models, one with a chrome buckle and one with a black one. Then it's got a, a magnet catch right there. There's a good shot of the model number. 59823-00. You can see that dude, it ain't going anywhere. And I like the look of it because the sloped part matches the shock and how it leans over. So visually, it looks pretty cool on the side. Normally, the non-exhaust side, on most bikes look kind of weird. So I wanted to do something here and I wanted a little bit of extra storage on the bike that was practical. But also looks good. I like the way that looks on there. It sits at just the right angle. It doesn't stick out too far. That's probably the best, best shot of it right there. See how it follows that line? And I maintained it being level there. The key was being able to tie wrap it to this metal belt guard here and then making my bracket on the bottom. So this thing is It's not going anywhere. Right now the cable ties that I got that guy done up with aren't the, the biggest, but uh, I'm gonna get some big old thick ones that are a little bit longer and uh, they, they won't have so much point stress. You know, the thin ones, I'm paranoid that might uh, eventually tear through the leather. But uh, it's pretty thick leather. I doubt that that'll happen. I'm being paranoid about it. But it's, it's pretty quick just to change out the tie wraps. You know, even from the back, that looks good doesn't stick out too much. I mean if you look over the bike, you know it doesn't really stick out too much more than the exhaust does, but gives some visual appeal to this side. This is standard on the uh, 
the Scout Bobber, but it's an accessory item, and I think it goes for just under 130 bucks uh, retail. I think you can even see it online on Indian's website. But um, you know, you just swap it out, and that powder coating or paint, whichever it is, matches the frame and the front uh, front pulley cover and the engine so much better than the plastic, and uh, you know, looks cool. People are going to want to know how the hell I did that. Well, if they watch my video, they'll know. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you click the like button, the subscribe, and the little like bell notification thing down by the subscribe button, I appreciate it. That way you get notifications when we do put out new videos. Uh, Melly should be in the next few videos because they're going to be about her bikes. Uh, we're going to get cracking in the Barney sometime soon. And for the Scout, I pretty much got that guy wrapped up with about everything I want to do to it. Uh, there are a couple of small things I'm still on the fence about, and one of those involves me doing some sewing, which will be interesting. So, uh, once again, thanks for watching, and until I see everyone again, ride safe.